Hello and welcome to the 12th episode of my paint and pigment making series. This time I'm trying to make a dye, pigment and paint out of chamomile. So let's get right into it. Here I have some dried chamomile flowers that I got from a spice shop, although I'm sure it's probably fine to just use tea instead. I mean chamomile is pretty abundant. I place some of them into a jar and add some boiling water. I let the flowers sit in the water for an hour or two and then I put them through a sieve. I straight away noticed that it became kind of slimy though and had a mucousy feel which I'm guessing has to do with the substance that's present in chamomile. It absorbed a lot of the water and wouldn't let it go but after squeezing as much juice as I can I ended up with a golden yellow chamomile dye. I don't know if it would work for textile dyeing though, as you'll see in a bit. I grab some alum, which is a mordant and is what will produce my pigment as well as help the dye to adhere to fabric. The chamomile went from a warm yellow to a dull green. It also shows pH sensitivity. Anything acidic would turn this chamomile towards the green side. Pretty disconcerting stuff. This isn't the first time that it happens though where pH craziness changes the color, so I think I'm going to make a video where I specifically try different mordants and see which one doesn't affect the color. I let everything settle and then I filter my precipitate. After a few hours, I end up with a dark green dried paste. I peel these pieces into my coffee grinder, then grind them well. I place it onto a glass slab and start adding some drops of walnut alkyd and mulling. Now, if you've been following my videos, you've probably seen me struggle with the texture of these paints and pigments. This one is no different. Pretty awful texture and the color is pretty bad. I'm thinking I really need to change my methodology going forward. I mean, you can see the result for yourself. Pretty gross. So I'm gonna try something different. One of your, your suggestions actually. I repeat the whole process except this time I'm going to go ahead and add my dye straight to the alum and skip the whole washing soda part. I take some more flowers, add water, then drain it out. I take the lid of a jar and place some alum in it. I then add my chamomile dye to this alum. Again, it changes colors, which is always sad to see, but I'm hoping the texture might be good. I leave this out to dry and hope for the best. What I found in the lid after a few days, no lie, kinda shook me. The alum grew into crystals. It's actually pretty awesome but not really useful for making paint.
At this point, I found out that primarily people use alum to grow crystals, and they've grown some really cool looking ones. I'm going to try and not get distracted by making crystals, so I'm just going to pretend that I didn't just learn this. I dump the crystals in my cheap coffee grinder and grind them out of curiosity. So this is what the powder looks like. I'm not a huge fan of the color and the texture already doesn't look very promising. Since I don't really care about the color at this point and I'm just trying to improve the texture, I place them on my glass slab and add some walnut oil. Needless to say, the texture is pretty awful. It's like sand or table salt, which isn't very surprising. I'm just going to take my L on this one. Next week, I'm taking a break from natural pigments and making paint out of copper carbonate. I'm so thankful that one of you suggested this because I really need a small mental health break from plant-based pigments. And I'm pretty excited to work with this table and predictable color again. I hope you liked the video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. And thanks for watching.